Welcome to the Royal Canadian College of Organists Toronto Centre's Examination Masterclass Series. My name is Gordon Johnston. I'm the Chief Examiner of the Royal Canadian College of Organists. And in this video, I'd like to give you a few tips on how to prepare for your RCCO exam. You know, I've been examining for over 30 years. Well, I started as a very young child. And I've seen so many people prepare and not prepare. And I feel really passionate about our exams and I want to encourage you to do your very best. So here's a few ideas. First of all, number one, get a teacher. If you don't have a teacher right now, get a teacher. I'm sure you're a very fabulous organist. I'm sure you can play anything and do anything. But the one thing you can't do is hear yourself as other people hear you. So get a teacher. Um, you, even if it's like distance, online, whatever, work with a teacher to prepare every exam that you take. When you're at the organ, when you're doing your practicing, I highly recommend that you practice with a metronome. And the reason is that when you get in that examination situation, it's all of a sudden, um, your mind is going to be racing. You're going to be thinking about all kinds of things. You need somehow to have that interior metronome that is driving your playing and keeping everything together. So I highly recommend practicing with a metronome. And while you're practicing, practice not stopping. You know what I mean. I know you do. Because often when we're playing something, we play it over and over. And we all, when we bump up against something, oh, well, we stop, we go back, we fix it. We, but the problem is we don't ever practice going top to bottom. And then the day of your exam comes and you can't stop. And, and all of a sudden it's the first time you've ever played your piece all the way through without stopping. So practice not stopping. One of the things you can do to prepare for the examination situation is to record yourself. Now, you know, in these days of COVID, we're all been, we've been recording ourselves for online worship and everything. And so we're familiar with what it takes to record, but we're also familiar with that feeling of being able to play a piece blindfolded in your sleep until you push the record button and all of a sudden your mind is all over the place, your fingers can't remember where they go. Practice recording yourself so that you push the record button and you can't stop, you go top to bottom. And that will help reveal places where maybe a little bit of work would help you avoid uh, problems. So another practice thing is, I would encourage you to practice on the examination organ. Practice on the organ where you'll take your exam. Now, uh, the RCCO has specific rules about how much time has to be allotted for each candidate, the minimum amount of time that you're to be given on the examination organ. Now, I know that you wish you could take this exam at your home church, on your home organ, on the organ you're familiar with. And sometimes that happens. But here's the thing, for us as organists, everywhere we go, there's a different organ. And part of what we do is adapt to a new organ. So. Maybe the exam will be at your church. Maybe it'll be at another church. Well, that's part of being an organist. So I really encourage you to practice on the examination organ and become comfortable with it. I really strongly encourage you to take seriously the tests at the console. Things like transposition, open score, sight reading, improvisation. These tests are so important. And remember that in the weight of the marks, you have repertoire, hymns, and tests at the console. Each of those has equal weight, and you must pass each section 
independently. You have to pass each one. And, and so many students spend a couple of years preparing their repertoire and a week and a half preparing the tests at the console. You can't just throw those tests at the console away. They're a part of your musicianship. And so I strongly encourage you, you know, get in there and practice things. Even if you're not perfect at it, you, you don't want to just say, oh, well, I can do all these, except, well, I can't do site transposition, but, well, I'll just throw that one away and hope that the rest are really, really good. Don't throw things away. Spend a bit of time at it. And it, even if it's not perfect, you're going to get some marks for it. And so I really strongly encourage you to pay attention to the tests at the console. In terms of written work, write sample papers. You can contact the RCCO National Office and get past year's papers. Practice writing them. Practice writing them under uh, exam conditions. So you've got a three-hour block, no piano. You've got to just write by hand music out of your head. So practice that. And I would recommend that when you've written a sample paper, you send it to the national office and have it marked. I think it's only $35, it's a very nominal fee. To have your paper marked, we'll have it marked by the same people who are gonna mark, you know, who regularly mark RCCO written work. And you'll get comments and feedback. So really, uh, I'd encourage you to send your sample papers in for marking. Um, now, when you're looking at the, the essay questions, every year, or every three years, as the syllabus changes, they publish what the subject will be. Well, think about that, because, you know, when I was on the exam committee, we would sit there and we'd look at the subject and dream up questions. You can do that. Look at it and say, oh, well, the, uh, the question is, talk about the Orgelbewegung and the resurgence of interest in uh, historical organs. Oh, well, what might be a question about that? Oh, maybe uh, name some important organs in Canada that were part of the Orgelbewegung. Uh, name builders and talk about their instruments that were influenced by historical practice. You know what I mean? Make these questions up for yourself. And all of a sudden, you'll be thinking about the things that you need to know for your exam. I just strongly encourage you, my dear young organists, to prepare, to work on these exams and get everything ready because you only have to pass this exam once and you've got that diploma for the rest of your life. Um, you know, the examiners, we want you to pass. We want you to do well. And I will be very, very happy to answer any questions that you have. And I send you my very best wishes for great success in your examination preparation.